Hey, this is Class Creatives, and in this video, we'll discuss how Kojima Productions' Death Stranding series uses Autodesk Maya to produce award-winning animations for Hideo Kojima's most recent sequel. Many of our students are curious about the software and techniques that were used to bring Kojima's 2019 Game of the Year cutting-edge animations to life. His sequel, Death Stranding 2 on the Beach, is making a comeback in the highly anticipated franchise. In this video, we'll discuss Hideo Kojima's creative process, his departure from Konami, and how he went indie, creating his own production studio. How his award-winning animations are made with Autodesk Maya, paired with state-of-the-art motion capture tools, how live-action reference footage is used to inspire genuine acting choices, and his character art and design process. We'll dive deep into Kojima's award-winning career history, along with what's next for Kojima Productions, as they aim to expand their creations beyond the video game space. All right, look, Morty, Kojima just wants us to reconnect to fractured society and stop the death stranding. A theme explored in the 2001 game Metal Gear Solid 2 came to be based on an unexpected situation where Hideo Kojima was falsely identified online as an assassin of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. On the internet forum 4chan, when an anonymous user posted a photograph of him as the perpetrator. This event was examined through the game's storyline on how digital manipulation could be used through weaponized memes and featured a protagonist who becomes a victim of a misinformation campaign. Kojima often reflects on the lasting impact of digital information online. Kojima created the multi-million dollar selling Metal Gear Solid series for Konami when he joined the company in the mid-80s. During his lengthy career at Konami, he ascended to the role of VP. Throughout his career, Kojima faced numerous challenges, particularly with corporate management at Konami. Despite the success of his games, Kojima's creative vision often clashed with the company's profit-driven approach. This tension culminated in a high-profile fallout during the development of Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. The game, despite its critical acclaim and commercial success, was marred by reports of cut content and rushed production due to Konami's internal pressures. Kojima's relationship with Konami became increasingly strained over time. The company's shift towards mobile gaming and profit-driven strategies clashed even further with Kojima's creative aspirations. This conflict ultimately led to Kojima's departure from Konami in 2015. Kojima's departure from Konami was filled with controversy. The fallout highlighted the tensions between creative freedom and corporate interests, a struggle many developers face in the industry. He stated that once he left the company in 2015 to re-establish Kojima Productions as an independent studio, he couldn't get a credit card, and the bank would not lend him any money. And when he tried to lease a floor in his building, they told him that he was now independent, as if he was yet to create anything. That is the moment when Kojima thought, oh, I really am indie. Only when one of the building's owners, a fan of Kojima's games, intervened was he offered a rental agreement for his prime patch of Tokyo real estate. At times, Kojima has been derided for appearing pretentious and egotistical. He was mocked for placing the title a Hideo Kojima game before every mission in Metal Gear Solid V. That was perfect. However, it is important to note that Kojima's time at Konami was coming to an end. Kojima does not own the Metal Gear IP, and he sought to drive home the message that he was the author of the series. This allowed him to use his game as a brand, which he leveraged to secure funding of his own game company, Kojima Productions. Regarding social media, Kojima states that he believes creators should not say anything at all, and that they should represent their thoughts only on what they create. However, as an indie studio, he does not have anyone to back him up with promotion, so it has become part of his job. He is known for teasing projects in ways that will generate excitement and anticipation for his games such as when he made handprints left on the beach in the first Death Stranding trailer made of wire, filming the pre-visualization in the shared hallway of the office he used before moving there. Other companies used the hallway and would wonder what he could possibly be doing when he was seen filming. These cryptic posts and videos often lead to him meeting musicians, writers, directors, and actors via social media. After 30 years with Konami, Kojima went independent in 2015, partnering with Sony Entertainment, where he was granted the creative freedom he had long sought, allowing him to pursue projects beyond games. 
His first phase as an indie developer focused on establishing his IP, Death Stranding, which involves securing office space, staff, and a game engine. He emphasizes the importance of owning his IP. Allowing for a release on multiple platforms and hardware. The project featured collaborations with Guillermo del Toro and other Hollywood talents. The game was Kojima's response to the divisive and fragmented nature of contemporary society. He envisioned a game that would emphasize the importance of building connections in a disconnected world. This theme of stranding inspired not only the title but also the core gameplay mechanics, where players are tasked with reconnecting a fractured America by delivering supplies and establishing communication networks. Kojima considers Death Stranding to be an especially new type of game. He worried whether it would be accepted or not. He compared playing the game to climbing Mount Fuji by herself. He stated, It can be a hard time. You might stop halfway and think, Why am I putting myself through this much trouble? and give up. But when you climb all the way to the summit and see the rising sun, and all the effort and hardship will be validated. You probably start to cry. That's the kind of game it is. But you can't cry if you turn back without going all the way to the summit. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I actually remember I had to. They asked me to. They asked for. I had to. They asked me to. They asked to scan my. Um, the uh, like underneath my feet. Quiet. <laughs> Photorealistic visuals are an important aspect to Kojima's video game style. Casting actors who perfectly fit his narratives in terms of age and personality are critical for his creative vision. Facial capture technology is utilized to capture nuances of expressions so that the in-game character facial performances will match the actors. Metal Gear Solid V used the Fox engine for photorealistic experiences to capture physical likeness, voice, facial expressions, and movements comparable to live-action movies. The Death Stranding series uses the Decima engine, originally created by Guerrilla Games, the studio behind the Killzone and Horizon franchises. Photorealistic sculpts are created using ZBrush with animation done with Autodesk Maya. Camera captures play an important role capturing all angles of the actor's face to generate the final 3D model and textures. With updates in modern hardware and software advancements in skin translucency, more realistic dynamic shadows reflecting light changes will help bring the latest installment of Death Stranding 2 to even more hyper-realistic visuals for cinematics and gameplay. Sony's mobile motion capture system Mokopi is being used in the game development process at Kojima Productions. The game designer uses Mokopi to make provisional animations during the early stages to imagine what the game might be like. This allows animations to be integrated directly into the prototype build so that it can be directly passed onto the art team. This cuts down the need for animators to create prototype movements to test gameplay from scratch or conduct an expensive and time consuming mocap shoot to capture movements. Turnaround time is extremely fast, cutting down the lengthy mocap solving process so the captured movements can be integrated quickly for testing purposes. The additional sensors have improved accuracy for more human-like animations. Mokopi allows more flexibility during the pre-production game testing phases. Is it your dream to someday work for Kojima Productions? If not, feel free to skip ahead to the next section or stick around if you're just curious about what they look for in artists they want to hire. We create videos like this one to not only show you how Kojima's games are made, but to also give you a chance to learn the exact workflows necessary for your career or even your own personal projects. Like most AAA game studios, they'll want Maya experience or something equivalent if you are an animator. Several of our instructors actually work for Kojima and you can learn from them in our courses covering everything from animation and rigging to environment and game design and character creation. We'll have some links in the description if you're interested in taking your art in a new direction with us. The seventh anniversary of Kojima Productions was the beginning of its phase two, marked by a move to a larger office space. The new studio includes a bigger white room designed to house a one-to-one -one scale Luden statue, a more spacious development studio, a dedicated photogrammetry room, and a social kitchen lounge area. The photogrammetry room is also used for interviews and video shooting. They can capture images from 360 degrees, which is used to create 3D models of real-world objects for integration into games. 
They also have a dressing room or waiting room for actors involved with their productions. They also have a voice recording studio, which includes a control room and a recording booth. Kojima compares the control room as resembling the bridge of a spaceship. The studio also has work areas with partition spaces with long counter desks, which are typical for Japanese production studios. They also have napping areas and meeting rooms. They have a tatami room for a large television, which the staff utilizes for movie screenings. Death Stranding 2 will pave the way for his next two projects in development. Faison and OD, a collaboration project with director Jordan Peele that is attempting to push the boundaries within the video game medium. The project was teased at the 2023 Game Awards. Due to the impact of the pandemic on his creative process, it led him to rewrite aspects of Death Stranding 2 to better connect with players' pandemic experiences. He also has concerns about the increasing prevalence of remote work and the potential for entertainment to become overly personalized and less creatively challenging. He's working on a Death Stranding movie adaptation, but will not direct it himself due to his ongoing game projects. He plans to supervise the plot, emphasizing that the game was always conceived as a game first. He also has other movie projects in mind with a different story he has written. He states that the digital assets created for his games could potentially be used for movie adaptations. Kojima also signed with talent agency WME to expand his work in Hollywood while continuing his independent game development at Kojima Productions. His hopes are that with a dedicated team to manage his various projects, he will be able to utilize his time to create without unnecessary delays. Kojima envisions a third phase, where he can work with global talent to create new forms of digital entertainment, which could be movies, games, anime, or something entirely new. He believes that the world is now connected via the internet with accessible platforms and tools for creators, encouraging younger generations to independently create and share their work. He sees the future of entertainment as increasingly online and hybrid, blurring the lines between traditional mediums. Music plays a critical role in his storytelling, amplifying emotions and underscoring key moments. For Metal Gear Solid 2's music, he originally wanted to get Hans Zimmer, but Zimmer stated he couldn't do it for that kind of money. Kojima explains that for the Ludens and Kojima Productions logo creation, the design for a suit was explored, aiming for a blend between an EVA suit and armor. Some early concepts were deemed too much like a robot, while others resembled a standard spacesuit. One helmet design was favored for its combination of a spacesuit and medieval helmet aesthetic. The addition of a backpack further emphasized the spacesuit-like nature, suggesting the inclusion of life support devices. The character model was initially outsourced to a well-known company in Japan. However, the output was not satisfactory, so they brought the development in-house. They also underwent a process to capture 3D face data of Kojima for testing purposes. The scene test data was then used and applied to the character model. The face seen on the character model is actually a modified version of Kojima's face, captured through the 3D scanning process. Well that about wraps up this video on the history of Kojima and how he continues to revolutionize the video game creation process. From his early fascination with films to his groundbreaking work in video games, Hideo Kojima's creative process is a testament to his unwavering dedication to innovation and his boundless imagination. His unique blend of cinematic storytelling, intricate gameplay, and a constant push for technological advancement has cemented his place as a true visionary in the gaming industry. The good news for his fans is that he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon, stating, I intend on continuing as I am now even after I pass 80. One last thing about this video and our courses is that we don't use AI to write our content or do all of our research. With the rise of AI, we understand how you might assume we do it too. For this one, we dove into tons of his online interviews, documentaries, behind the scenes footage, his Instagram posts, and other resources so we can celebrate his amazing work together. We'll include all of our sources in the description in case you want to take a closer look. The newest entry in the series looks better than ever. Will you be playing on release day? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Perfect!